YouTube, what's up then? What's going on? Listen, we've recently reached a thousand subscribers on Trial Talk. I've not had a chance to jump on and just give a massive shout to you subs um, for pushing us into the thousand domain. Um, Alex Morley um, was the, was my thousandth subscriber. So uh, he, he'd been stalking the Trial Talk YouTube channel for some time. And when that key moment came, He's jumped on to become the, the thousandth subscriber for YouTube. So nice one, Alex. Appreciate that. It's a bit creepy what you've done, but very sweet at the same time. And I think you did the same thing for Anthony as well, <laughs> which is brilliant. Um, top lad. And I want to shout out to Alex as well for, for his channel, Alex Morley. Um, Alex Morley Plastering, I think is, is it called. Um, the guys that are watching Trial Talk, you've probably already subscribed to Alex. Um, and also Anthony Parry, another brilliant channel. Um, while I'm at it, um, Eric Valanci, um, absolute gentleman. Eric's the reason, he's actually the reason I started this YouTube channel. I was inspired by what he's doing on YouTube, his videos and how he comes across. And... Um, He's always plugging other people's content. He's always pushing other people's channels. And I just want to say a massive thank you to him for pushing Trial Talk, um, for recommending Trial Talk on his uh, live streams that he does each week. Um, it's really kind of him to do that and good of him. Um, he's also pushed um, Alex and uh, Anthony and also Joel Cook. Another shout out. Uh, Rendervate is his channel. Um, we're all doing the same thing. On YouTube aren't we guys we're all plasterers we're all trying to help people we're all sharing um, our ideas and our work um, with you guys so um, I think it's important that we all band together we all stick together help each other and recommend each other because um, the people that are watching are going to benefit um, not only from what we're showing but also from what um, other plasterers are doing as well um, and different variations. I think uh, Joel specialises in external vendors. He's, uh, he does videos on his uh, spray machine and and stuff like that. Um, Anthony Parry's is a, I believe, is a fifth generation plasterer. He's uh, very very knowledgeable. Um, he's got stuff that he does online plastering. Um, and again, Alex is a fantastic spread. His videos are top notch. Um, his presentation. And every, I love his channel, I love his content, um, much better than uh, mine, <laughs> if I'm honest. Um, yeah, he's really professional and he's got the presentation down to a T, so I, lo I love watching Alex's stuff. He does a lot of uh, cement rendering, if you're interested in that. So check these guys out. Um, don't forget Eric's channel as well. He's got his live stream every Monday as well. Um, I'll put the links in for you. If you're not already subscribing to these people, um, if you're learning, if you're a budding plasterer or apprentice, um, subscribe to these guys because you'll you'll take some value away from their videos as well. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to say thank thank you to everybody. Um, and also, um, Matt's going to take over this week on Trial Talk YouTube. Um, I've been focusing heavily on the Facebook group, um, on the fundraiser, and also there's a new blog that I'm going to chuck on there in the coming days. Um, Jeff Williams is an inventor, X spread. Um, if you don't know who Jeff Williams is, he's the inventor of the work tool boots, which are um, a height enhancing safety boot, as, as they're called. Um, basically, a pair of stilts. Um, you've probably seen them by now if you're familiar with the channel. Um, so, they're orange um, plastic um, stilts that we wear when we're plastering ceilings. And um, we get stuck into um, his story and how how he came about inventing the, the work tool boots. It's quite interesting, it's quite an inspiring story. Um, so Jeff was on the verge of throwing the towel in on his designs. Um, he shows us his prototypes, which he built out of uh, iron, it looked like iron bars and timber. Um, and he, he got fed up basically and he, he sold all these prototypes. He had a garage full of prototypes, which he sold for scrap. And he was going to scrap the whole thing off um, until one day walking along the beach he was inspired um, and decided to to get stuck back in and redesign the boots um, and that's resulted in uh, what we have today the work tool boot which we all use or a lot of us use um, if you're a taller plasterer 
so we'll get stuck into that on the blog post um, yeah Matt's been working on a kitchen renovation in the last week and he's filmed his progress on that uh, which involves um, a boo-boo I won't ruin it for you but um, hence the name of the uh, video booby trap so listen enjoy that um, I'll be back next week with an internal wall insulation project that me and Curtis have been focusing on and um, yeah again thanks for uh, subscribing we're into the 1000 something subscribers now it just means that we can continue to push out content and um, reinvest in the channel and um, keep keep the videos coming basically so take care and we'll see you next week cheers guys nice one morning everyone my name's matt just thought i'd do a little video for you today just to show you an owl shaped kitchen ceiling it's not the straightest but i work my magic with the plaster once it's boarded put the speed skim over it make sure it's nice and flat got a few booby traps i've got to get around make sure i don't screw into these pipes Push all the electrician's cables up, out of the way. He said that's fine, so he knows where they are. You can probably see how wonky it is from here. But yeah, like I said, when I get the speed skim on it, when I plaster it, I can fill, fill it out and make sure it's nice and flat for the customer. I'm using 12.5mm plasterboards. Um, just because I'm screwing straight onto the joists and they're a lot more sturdier than the, the 9mm boards which are, they're quite flimsy really so they're good for overboarding ceilings rather than straight onto the joists so then you get the in between the joists it's a lot sturdier than you see I've had to mix it up a bit today I've got a few 6 for threes, 12.5 mils, and I've had to get few eight befores just because B and Q had run out of the six befores. They had what well, they had eight left and I took them all. I've had to get some of the big boys just to see it through. Just want to show you this I've got because it's an L shaped ceiling. My boards went that way on this side because the joists are running across. I don't know if you can see that. Then as you come to, to this way, the joists change direction. So I think what I'm going to do is start boarding in that corner, run it along, then I'll have a nice straight line with those boards. And then I'll, I'll put these ones up then. I'll know how much I've got to cut to. To put on the ceiling an 8x4 plasterboard, I've only had to trim it by 100mm, so it will fit from joist to joist. But I've got one prop, it's got a broken handle, so <coughs> this should be fun. So I'm going to record it, Just so if it goes wrong it'll be a laugh, if it goes right I'll look good. But first I've got to... Uh, Got to go over the apprentices where he's missed a couple of nails. Let me just show you. You know your name, don't you, Curtis? One, two, two nails. I let him off with them too because he's not here. Anyway, here we go.
So the booby trap got me then. So it's day two, plasterboard in the ceiling in the L-shaped kitchen. And I got a bit behind yesterday because I've had a bit of an issue with the boo-boo. It managed to uh, catch me out. What I've done is I've screwed through, luckily it's the, the hot feed, which isn't connected yet, and they're brand new pipes. <laughs> I don't know if you can see the hole. Even though yesterday I said I had to watch out for them, I still managed to fire a drywall straight through. <laughs> anyway, these things happen on bad days. I'll just blame the apprentice. I'm sure Curtis won't mind for that one. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick one of these little valves on. Cut a bit of the pipe off, stick that on, and uh, should be good to go. I'll show you when it's when it's on. So there's the the pipe repaired, as good as new. Don't let that happen again. <laughs> Ceiling's boarded. The isolator valves on. Pipes fixed. So the next job is scrape back these walls, knock the tiles off, a bit of bonding coat, straight edge, get it ready for skimming. Okay, so that's all scraped. Just got to sweep up and then uh, get it ready for PVA. Well, I guess it's that time of day. It's coffee time. Ready for a nice coat of bonding now. I'm going to eat first because I'm starving. It's a nice consistency, as Stuart would call it. It's like cottage cheese. Let's see how we get on with this then. Just starting by filling in the, the brickwork, but it's gone back to brick. I'll go over that with my straight edge, and when it's set a little bit, I'll give the whole wall a good skimming bonding, a nice coat of bonding. So I've got some more brickwork to do there. Build the top, and up to the boiler, and I've also got the door, the doorway. Fill that in, level it out. Might have to get the float out, float it up. Just a few traces, just to make sure they're all filled in. So I've um, finished bonding this wall. Uh, it's nice and, I'll just show you, it's nice and, nice and flat. Nice and plump, both ways. So I'll get, get a nice skim on that. And then it'll be nice and plumb for the kitchen fitters when they come in. Um, not long put a coat on this one, just the old doorway, just to fill that out. Uh, just waiting for it to go a bit, got the heater on it. And then I'll give it a little float up, 
and scratch it up. Uh, just waiting for this one to go a little bit more and then I'll, I'll scratch that one a bit. Give it a key so the plaster can stick to it better. I might mesh it as well, put some fiberglass mesh on. Just to make sure it's a, get a nice finish, no cracks. Uh, yeah, and I'll show you how we get on later on. Day number uno, dos, tres. Today I'm going to plasterboard these reveals. So I'm going to board this side, have the board overhang in a bit, or 50mm. But then once, I've, once that's stuck, I can bond, then put some bonding coats for hard wall up this bit. Dot and dab a board onto the header and also this brickwork here. So I'll do the same again 50mm, 70mm overhanging on this side. I'm going to come past the waste pipe and have it overhanging more than I need this side too. So I'll dab, dot and dab it onto there, then I can fix my timbers in behind attached to this piece, original piece of timber. Feels quite sturdy, it's not gonna come off. Uh, I had to rip the last the last box in and off because it was water damaged and it was just falling to pieces. And then I'll move on to bonding this bit out. And a little bit more bonding on this side which I was going to do yesterday but these wall, these two walls they ate more bonding coat than, than I anticipated and this is all just prep work so hopefully tomorrow I can skim the ceiling just got my little cutting in pot so rather than using using my roller, which it's quite a thick mix in there of PVA, I don't want it to be too thick on the brickwork because it probably won't go off so quick. So I've just put filled my pot up halfway with water, and then just put half of my thick mix of PVA in, and that should that should do the trick. So uh, yeah, uh, see how we get on, see you later.